Well, humor is important on a number of different reasons. First and foremost, humor is a great coping mechanism. Okay? You take anybody who is struggling with life for whatever reason. Humor is a way to deal with the day-to-day struggles in life. On the plus side, it gives your brain a break. It maybe gives you a different perspective to look at something. Uh, Finding a little bit of humor, even in a bad situation, can make you laugh about it. It helps you cope. It helps you deal. Taken to a negative extreme, humor can become a form of escapism. So humor and done to itself isn't good, isn't bad. It's the way that humor is used. What makes humor destructive? Okay, let's say you have a real major problem in your life, okay? Because we're talking about relationships today. Let's say your relationship is not going so well. And, you know, you and your wife maybe are on the verge of a divorce. Instead of dealing with your issue, you might want to take a night off and go see a comedy movie. Hang out with your friends because you're going to hear the same old stories and laugh about the same old things and tell the same old jokes. Maybe go out to a comedy club. Now, doing that as a, a you know a, a break is a good thing because it allows you to come back to the situation fresh. But when you're constantly seeking escapism through humor, you're not ever dealing with the actual problem. The problem itself gets worse. It festers. It becomes destructive. So if we're dealing with a relationship, rather than sit down and talk to your partner and say, okay, look, we've both taken a break from each other now. We have to sit down and talk about this and work through this. The person who is addicted to humor is going to keep trying to make jokes, keep trying to find humor in it, keep trying to laugh, and, and not give enough time to deal with the problem seriously. If you're just joining us, this is Lori Jacobs, and you're listening to the Party Line Talk Show on K103.7 FM. Joining me today on the phone is relationship expert Frank Kerman. It's April Fool's Day, and we're taking a lighthearted look at using humor, both good and bad, in relationships. We'll return to our conversation right after this short commercial break. Frank Talks is sponsored in part by Everything Out of Her Mouth is a Test, a man's guide to the emotional needs of women. What would your life be like if you knew exactly what to say and do with women? Learn how to handle women's tests by addressing her emotional needs. By this, you create the type of attraction that will make her see you as the one. This book is a guide for men to understand exactly what a woman means when she speaks. Is that worth changing your life forever? Buy this book at franktalks.com now. Frank Talks is sponsored in part by Multiple Women Management, the 10 secret rules of a harem master. What are the written rules of multiple women management? How are the emotional needs of women addressed in a lifestyle that supports dating multiple women at the same time? Can love actually exist when dating many women at once? How does a man handle it when his lovers meet each other? What are the real risks of dating multiple women at the same time? Why does a man that wants multiple long-term partners need to be wary of the law? What is the Desperate Measures Act that even the most notorious player could use to get a woman to believe that he is ready for a serious long-term relationship? This program has those answers and more, including a brief overview of the difference between monogamy polyamory, swinging, multiple women management, the 10 secret rules of a harem master. On sale now at franktalks.com. From Loser to Seducer is the story of Frank B. Kermit. This book marks the triumph of a nice guy over most of his inner demons. This includes going from being a loser to managing five lovers at the same time, his first Valentine's Day with two women at the same time, and getting back the one that got away. Want to learn how you can change your life? Buy this book at franktalks.com. Thanks for tuning in to the Party Line Talk Show on K103.7 FM. I'm your host, Lori Jacobs, and on the phone is relationship expert, Frank B. Kermit. And we're talking about some funny and maybe not maybe not so funny, the side of humor in relationships. Um, so, Frank, there's many hit TV shows and uh, movies that set bad examples when it comes to humor in relationships. 
Um, do you have some examples and, and why? Are they not really good examples of uh, humor? Absolutely. One of my all-time favorite TV shows is The Drew Carey Show. I love the humor in there, the characters constantly getting into crazy situations. Unfortunately, though, when it comes to the type of humor that they exhibit, especially when they're playing jokes on one another, on television, it's fine. It's great. It's a fantasy land. In real life, if any of your friends played those jokes on you, you wouldn't stay friends. Okay, Drew Carey, the, the character's friends on the show, cost him so many opportunities in his job, in opportunities for him to grow, in opportunities for him to, to, to raise his status. They're the reason that he stayed where he was. In real life, if your friends interfere with your life that much, they wouldn't stay your friends. The adults who can watch a, tro a show like Drew Carey can put it into context. They understand that's why it's funny. Because in real life, you'd probably punch out one of your friends if they tried to do that stuff to you. The children watching shows like Drew Carey will understand, oh, this is how I'm supposed to treat my friends. In real life, there's three rules to having humor with your partner in any relationship, whether it be a friendship or a romantic relationship. And those three rules are, number one, you never make a joke with your partner that is going to hurt your partner's reputation. Reputation is one of the most important things we have. It is our greatest asset. A reputation can make you or break you. You never make a joke with your partner or at your partner's expense that's going to hurt their reputation. An example of this, um, I knew of a couple where she really liked his sense of humor when they were in private. However, she didn't want it known publicly that a lot of the things that he says and that he does, which were somewhat childish and vulgar, she didn't want people to know that she found it funny. What did her partner do? He sometimes would get into character or he would make those jokes with her in front of other people. And she would laugh and then get angry at him for making her laugh in front of these other people. He could not understand why. And the reason it was because she had a reputation to maintain and protect within that social circle. She didn't want to be thought of as someone who finds a particular vulgar comment funny. Because her husband at the time didn't think to say, hmm, this is something that's reserved just for us, he made a joke in public, she laughed at it, and then became self-conscious of it. So that's an example. The, the next thing, the next rule about making jokes with your friends and your lovers, you never do anything that's going to interfere with their ability to make a living. So what is an example of that? Okay, um, let's say your friend is starting up a business. All right, and they're in business for whatever something. And you go around making jokes saying, oh, yeah, uh, so-and-so came over and he fixed that. Oh, it was so terrible. The machine didn't work. It cost me even more money. I had to go. And they make a really funny story about the guy's incompetence. Well, somebody listening to that may think, okay, it's funny. It's just a joke. But if it interferes with the guy's ability to make a living because these jokes start developing a life of their own, um, you're hurting somebody's potential to sustain their own life. This happens a lot in the media where some sort of media personality will make jokes about their very own sponsors such that the sponsors end up losing money because the media personality starts making these type of jokes. Well, in radio, that would be suicide. Exactly. Unfortunately, you have some people out there that are not smart enough to realize that until it's too late. Well, sometimes I, I feel, too, that people, they're trying to be funny, but they're not funny. And, and it kind of gets annoying after a while. Exactly. Uh, not everybody is good at humor. It's a skill that can be learned. It's a skill that can be developed. But humor only works in context. And that means there are times to be funny and there are times to be serious. And depending on your context, on your status, a good example of this is that if you've ever had a job and your boss or your supervisor is the type to make jokes about other people in the office, because it's a boss, because it's someone that has a position of power and status, anything they say, even in the form of humor, could interfere with that person's ability to...